Welcome to today's video and today I want to talk about a topic that if you are not new to my community and the leading in healthcare community then you probably have heard me speak about on a number of occasions, but I think that it's worth mentioning again and again because although we claim to understand or say that we know what it's all about, we don't implement it very well in healthcare. And it's all about a key skill that we need when it comes to building resilience. And if you don't know what resilience means, or if you feel like you're experiencing challenges and they tend to get you down, or you tend to spiral, or you're just feeling like you're wanting to give up and it could be your professional life, but you know here that the things that I'm teaching you also pertain to your personal life. Then I want you to pay attention to today's episodes because I've written down some of my top notes for what I feel is going to help really carry you through these tough times and these hard times when you're feeling defeated or disengaged or feeling like giving up. And again, it's all about the transformative power of resilience and how it applies to our lives as leaders, both in our professional leadership, but also in our self-leadership. So listen up. The first thing that you need to understand is that resilience is a skill that can be built. And the benefit of building resilience in your character traits is that it helps you to weather the storms. It helps you to get through the chaos. It helps you to bounce back faster and stronger. Because one thing about it is that if you look at the trends going on in healthcare and the demands and the pressures that are being put on us as leaders, you're going to recognize that things are not changing. And if you've been to any of um, my speaks where I teach in conferences and speak in conferences, then what you will also realize is that when we're looking at the trends that we need to be prepared for as leaders, they're pretty much the things that we're dealing with right now, which means that this fast paced and very demanding part of leadership that's going on right now is something that's going to carry into the future. If you don't know what resilience means, I want us to calibrate around what it truly means to be resilient or have resilience or to develop resilience. Resilience is that trait inside of you that allows you to bounce back, that allows you to roll with the punches, that allows you to sometimes take hits in your life and through those hits in your life you are not simply surviving and getting energetically drained both on a are all on a mentally physically and emotional level but you're actually able to thrive in the face of all of these challenges and demands that you're facing day in and day out it's that inner strength that you can tap into that helps you to keep going even when it seems like everything is against you or it seems like everything is just maybe just not going the way that you want them to or just is getting tough and getting challenging. So a lot of people think that they have resilience, but I want you to really think about what it looks like in your life when you don't have resilience. And so I'm going to share with you some ways that you can look for inside of yourself and in your own life to see if you have resilience or you lack resilience because the first part of us being better prepared for the challenges that we have to face and taking care of our mental health is recognizing when there may be gaps in where we are right now versus where we can be when we are at our best. So here's some things that I've written down for you to examine so that you can See if maybe you are someone that lacks resilience. I want you to watch out for the following signs. Feeling overwhelmed by stress, struggling to recover from setbacks, and experiencing a persistent sense of exhaustion. If any of these resonates with you, it's a sign that your resilience may need to be honed in, may need to be paid attention to, and you may need to do some nurturing around your level of resistance. And I want you to remember that when you are looking at this, I don't want you to just look at it in the face of what you're dealing with at work. I want you to look at it in all areas of your life because oftentimes we associate these feelings of disengagement and burnout and overwhelm with our job because we spend a lot of our time there. No doubt our jobs are stressful. But when you start to examine your personal life, maybe you're going to find some mess and some stress and some things that you need to deal with on that level. And if you think that the two don't go hand in hand, then you're very mistaken because a lot of the times the burnout that 
those of us that are experiencing burnout experience don't solely have to do with work. It has to do with a lot of different things. And so I just want you to watch out for these feelings of stress, overwhelm, exhaustion, feeling like you get triggered and not being able to really bounce back and let things roll off as easily because those are some signs and symptoms that you may need to go back and uh, like turn into yourself for this resilience. The good news again is that a lot of us have been taught that the way that we are, our personalities, our, our sensitivity, our lack of sensitivity, all of the things are just a part of our personality and that our personality cannot be changed. And that is furthest from the truth. Just like any other trait that you want to adopt, you can be somebody that is able to be more resilient just by cultivating and nurturing the trait of resilience, how it relates to how you operate in your day-to-day -day life. And it all starts firstly with self-awareness and secondarily with self-care. And I'm not talking about that superficial self-care where you go get a glass of wine and you get in the tub or you go and watch your favorite Netflix show while you're eating crappy food. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about self-awareness where you take moments, regular moments, intentional moments in your life where you are reflecting on your own self, how you move through the world, your values, your sense of purpose, what it is that you do on the day to day, um, your own well-being, things like those. Are you prioritizing those things in your life? Nine times out of 10, <laughs> you know, I've been working with hundreds of clients for many, many years. And a lot of people, when they come to me for help, they are not doing this. They are not prioritizing this deeper level of connection to self and self-care that allows you to have the energy and the strength to not get depleted, to not get exhausted, to not feel like life is taking you down. And so if you are not doing that, then that's somewhere that you want to look at and somewhere that you want to start. And also, are you giving yourself this intentional space and these intentional moments in your life so that you can process what it is that you're going through and actually recharge? I'm not talking about PTO. Again, I'm not talking about mindless things that we sometimes do because those do help us to kind of dis disconnect from it all and feel better. But I'm talking about intentionally processing the stressful emotions and things that you are going through and then intentionally looking at ways that you can recharge and recharge doesn't mean rest all the time recharge means doing some intentional things maybe around healing some of the things that are going on on a deeper emotional physical and mental level in your life to be able to bounce back and feel like you have more energy and you can discount these all you want and you can continue to do these superficial things and wonder why no matter what you try to do, you're feeling the same way. But these acts that I'm describing are what's going to actually make those significant differences in your life when you're trying to enhance your ability to not let life get you down. Additionally, you're, you hear me talk about this all the time and I talk about it all the time because it is evidence-based, it is scientifically proven, it is neurologically proven that by practicing mindfulness and developing a truly growth-oriented mindset that you can contribute to building your resilience. Mindfulness is about being present and it's about being grounded and it's about being centered, not only in a feeling that you operate on in the day to day or not only in relation to time. I'm talking about being so centered that if everything is crazy, it's less likely to throw you off because you are assured and steadfast in who you are, again, on that deeper level of purpose, of values, of what's important to you, of how you navigate through the day, of how you lead yourself, of your philosophy and your way that you lead other people. It goes deeper. And by embracing this growth mindset and this mindfulness, what you start to do is you start to view challenges as these opportunities for growth and learning. And it's not that you are ignoring the things that are happening to you, but you're going to have a much easier time navigating some of these stressors or some of these 
times when you feel overwhelmed, if you look at them as opportunities for growth and opportunities for learning. For instance, I have talked very openly. It's been many, many years now since I've gotten a divorce, but I talk very openly about that because it's something that's very stressful to people and is very traumatic to people. And for me, I could have viewed that as something that really got me down and uh, you know all of the bad things that went with that. But instead, I chose to look at that as an opportunity for learning and an opportunity for growth and development and looking at myself and what I wanted my second part of my life to be. And so just by reframing the setback what or what could be perceived as, as a setback, because in some ways it was financially and all the other things, instead of looking, the, looking at those as setbacks, I started to look at them as lessons that could be learned. And just by reframing it as a lesson, it automatically shifts the energy around that thing that I'm experiencing. It, exp it shifts the energy around the thing that you're experiencing and it allows you to bounce back with a more renewed determination and actually be able to adjust and check and tweak and readjust so that things are more in alignment with the way that you truly want them to end up being or doing or having or whatever in the long run you get the outcome that you want in the long run lastly i just want to mention that if you find that you are struggling with being resilient i want you to know that you're not alone there are instances in all of our lives where we're going to need help there are those of us that have been equipped with certain traits and there are some of us that have to learn a certain trait and so you shouldn't be suffering in silence because there's many resources available to help you to move through some of these things that could be holding you back from your greatness or just holding you back from being available to show up on the day to day. And so you shouldn't be afraid to seek support. And in fact, in a world where we're taught to shut up and just keep pushing forward for you to have the courage to seek support at a time like this, where you may be experiencing a hardship, I want you to know that it is a courageous thing to do to move forward and get what it is that you need. Lastly, what I want you to know is that if you are someone that is desiring deeper help to be able to develop the resilience, to be able to feel more empowered and feel like everybody's not everybody and everything not, is not taking pieces away from you and actually pull back in your energy and start to reconnect with yourself and then move forward from a more centered place, then I do offer personalized solutions by the way of private coaching. And so again, if you've tried to do this work on your own and you're finding that it's not working out for you and you know that you're committed to living a higher quality life of impact in your professional, your personal life, and you want help, then I will leave some information with wherever you are watching or listening to this message so that you can reach out to me if you think that getting help is a good fit. Okay, so that is the end of the notes that I wanted to share with you. I want to let you know that again, resilience is something that we often don't talk about or we know about it, but we don't put it into practice. So just use this video and this message as a moment of self reflection and um, self-awareness so that you can recalibrate and center yourself into who you are, your self-care, your level of awareness, your emotional intelligence for the way that you not only lead your teams, but the way that you lead yourself as well. So that you're fostering growth, you're fostering evolution, you're fostering expansion and forward movement. And as always, if you want any more information, reach out to me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. And if you like what you've heard and you want more information like that, make sure that you're following me or subscribe wherever you are consuming this information because I put out a lot of information like this that's going to be helpful to you, to your leadership on a practical level and on a mind, body, and soul level. All right. Talk to you next time. Take care. Bye.